computer. So, you know, I always say the same thing whenever I'm starting an interview. I talk about how geeked up I am, but I'm like especially geeked up because I have with me today, um, and I can't pronounce his name. <laughs> So I'm going to have him say his name. But the thing is, um, I did, we did an interview. You were my first guest and the sound quality was so bad. I'm, and, and I had to talk to him again because you all have to hear his incredible story. So I am introducing my guest who's going to say his name and then he's going to tell me how I can like address him because I can't pronounce his name. I had, nobody can uh, pronounce my name, so uh, everybody say my name a little bit different, so that's okay, but you uh, spelled my name wrong, I saw. I... That, that was not good. <laughs> no, that was not good. It's not with two E's? It's not G-E? Oh, it's, it's double G. It's one E. One E, double T. I'm making that correction right now. Uh, so oh, most, my gosh. Most people say yet, something yeah. like that. Sometimes get uh, dots. They say get so, but it's too too hard to pronounce. So nobody saying that to me. So get that. That's good also. I listen. get is good. Well, the irony of that is that my stepmom's uh, we call her get. So okay. <laughs> yeah. So please say your full name and tell us where you're from. My name is uh, Get Began. I, I pronounce it in the English way. Uh, I'm from Dutch, from Holland, uh, but I live in Sweden. And what is your vocation? What do you do um, for a living? Photographer. I, I'm only doing photographic. Uh, and uh, oh, I'm now in the stock market also. In the, uh, so that's that's <laughs> quite interesting. <laughs> oh my goodness. So that's different from the last time that we spoke. So yes. The, one of the 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 um the the what, what, is I'm I can't get my own English out. What what's wonderful to me about how you and I connected is that I saw an incredible video come down in my news feed, and it was you. Um, I think you were videoing or or photographing a squirrel that was inside your space. And you were so incredibly still while this squirrel was like crawling all over you. And I, you know, we know that uh, nature photographers have to be very still and, and for long periods of time, but it was another thing to actually see this. And I remember thinking, there's no way I could have been that still with this squirrel, this red squirrel crawling all over me. It was absolutely phenomenal to me because, you know, being still, a lot of people have a hard time doing that. You know, we, we cannot seem to quiet our minds enough and be present enough to be that still. It was extraordinary to me. And so I had to, I had to have you as a guest and I wrote you and I was thinking, my goodness, I'm this, this strange person is sending an inbox to someone that just out of the blue and I hadn't even started my podcast that was the other thing I hadn't even started it and you were so kind in first of all responding because I was like oh he's not going to respond to this crazy person and <laughs> you were so kind and you agreed you were you were my my I think my first guest and um it, it it's it was just um for me such an honor to uh for you to agree to to do that <laughs> and then you're back <laughs> <laughs> i i bought my uh cam uh special because of your broad broadcast i thought this will not happen again i i i used it a lot with with other uh, people and in, in, uh, into interviewing so but it was because of your doing that i bought it <laughs> <laughs> i love how there's no accidents you know <laughs> because that was the thing that's right i couldn't see you we couldn't see each other um and then the the sound was so bad but anyway you are i, I want to talk to you about photography can you just tell me and tell us actually 
How did you come to becoming a photographer? Yeah, it, it started the, uh, when I was very young. I had my dark room and um, I did uh, black and white photography. I did some courses and uh, I did uh, photo, uh, photos for a magazine in that time for a youth magazine. But then it's uh, all stopped. Um, that was maybe when I was 16 or something. And I picked it up uh, eight years ago here. Uh, it was because um, there was a fox. I built my house. And when I uh, saw so balcony, everything was ready. And when I walked out of the door, uh, there was a fox standing in front of my door. And so I decided to go back to my kitchen to bring some meat. And uh, the fox still uh, was there. And uh, about two weeks, he came every day and uh, every day I, I started to photo the, the fox. And uh, I, I managed to uh, let him do crazy things. So, uh, and uh, in the end, he, uh, I, I managed that he went up in my balcony and, and, and uh, climbed in boxes. So um, two weeks of, of photographing that fox and uh, he also touched me. So it, it was a very, very nice start for photography. And I, I won some awards with this, those photos because nobody, make uh, a, a fox in a box uh, well, I, you, I mean it was a crazy idea and, uh, <laughs> after that fox there came and uh, I don't know the English name it's an, uh, uh, quite a, a nut uh, cracker I don't know the English name a big bird and uh, was that a, like a hawk or an eagle no almost so big as a crow okay crow. Okay. But then many spots, and it's a, a bird who love to eat nuts, so it's a nut uh, something. Okay. And um, the first day he came already to me after the fox because the fox was gone. Uh, he eat, uh, ate out of my hand the first day, and it was what? very very strange. And so I did much more complicated scenes. I I had mirrors that he looked in a mirror and uh, I took photography and uh, <laughs> so uh, but and I it was two weeks of, almost uh, also I, I could uh, photography and he followed me in the garden and I did and so I put uh, where I had a box for the fox on my balcony I started to do complicated scenes for the bird with mushrooms and, and the kind of nature stuff on it. And uh, also, I, I won uh, awards with this, those photos because nobody did that kind of photos. And, uh, yeah. But uh, so after some weeks, the, the bird did not uh, come back. And after that, uh, squirrels uh, started to arri arrive. And so that's what, that was eight years ago or something. And, and the squirrels still coming. And, and we, we, we still, uh, yeah. That is, that is, that's like a, you know, like a fairy tale kind of story. You know, yeah. where where a fox shows up and it's a friendly fox. And then he goes, okay, you can come now. And then the crow shows up or the bird like the crow. Yeah. And he hangs out with you and he does more intricate things and helps you develop your but photography. And then the crow goes, okay, y'all, come on. And then the squirrels show up. I mean, that that is such such a kind of like a fable, fairy tale story it's extraordinary but it speaks so much about your spirit and your i mean it's it's very much a reflection of you and who you are that these animals felt so familiar that they um you know like some people would say maybe those are uh, family members that are embodied in these animals that have come to hang out with you i mean it's just such a, an extraordinary story and so exciting and so people I urge you and gets um, all of his information will be in the uh, show description. Please, you have to see his work. It is absolutely extraordinary. And you're doing all kinds of things now, not just with um, like pictures, but you're doing, you have books. Yes. You have other type of yeah. things that you've. Yeah, it, it's, it's uh it, it has grown very big, uh, a lot of uh, 
people all around the uh, world know my work. And at this moment, there are nine different calendars every year published around the world in, in Germany, uh, in Austria, in America, Canada, I, I think. Um, different books, uh, publishers has, have, I've published myself also. So mm -hmm. it's it's quite big. It has become very big. and. Um, it's it's a little bit of progress. I I never liked that uh, uh, to have photos from myself or from other people. So I burned everything what I had. So I I, I don't have. So Matt, in its progress with uh, the 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 squirrels, I hope to to catch some models. Maybe people uh, interact with the squirrels. But um, in the end, it it became myself. So I, I do a lot of cra many crazy things with with myself as a model also so uh, let's say uh, um, uh, watching tv uh, together with with the with the squirrels and then <laughs> eating some nuts or something or uh, <laughs> table tennis together against <laughs> and playing chess with each other and that kind of things because i like to do new things what other people never done before and, yeah, and still yeah. I, I have so many uh, ideas still done what nobody does mm -hmm. and uh, so i i have put a kind of trend and i see more and more people uh, doing the things like i do and uh, mm -hmm. like it's, it's small things uh, nobody almost nobody had to explore with flowers and it, because normally uh, squirrels don't interact with flowers it's a simple thing but it does not happen in, in the nature so now i see so many people doing that kind of photos and uh, uh, with mushrooms also it, it's it's almost uh, impossible to see squirrels with mushrooms because <laughs> it's, it's not it, it's very rare so but the way i i put out scenes and and the food and, and so it, it it became it has become a lighter trend into the squirrel photography to do the things that i, I do wow that's pretty awesome i i think um what what i love about artists and and creative people is that and, and you know and I, I i need to preface that i'm not because there's creativity everywhere i mean even if you're um you know in whatever you're doing there there is creativity but i think that people that live mainly as artists they are our imaginations are so incredibly active like children and you yeah. end up exploring in ways that you know, spirit is talking to you and guiding you and you're not questioning it. There's, there's a freedom, I think, um, that, that happens with living as a, as an artist that, that is just to me so, um, um, inspiring and stimulating at the same time. It's like, you're never at a loss for ideas. There's always. It's this, I, I thought about the word uh, creativity because, um, an artist does not uh, need creativity to be an artist. Um, creativity for me is to create something new, what it, what is not uh, happened before. Mm -hmm. And and I see a lot of artists imitate other artists, and and uh, that's not for me creativity. Creativity is is creating up from the spirit, from mm -hmm. uh, the, the dream world, and and right. the dream world is is kind of world what what is that's not the reality we know so we we don't still we have to materialize that from the spirit world yes. and then it's, then it's always new and that's creativity and uh, i found out many people uh, don't have creativity because they cannot dream they cannot mm -hmm. fantasize in in that way and and bring it bring it down somehow um, so the word creativity is for me is, has another meaning than maybe the lecture, uh, dictionary. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know that's very interesting. I hear I hear what you're saying in in your how you defined and how uh, you define creativity. What that means to you? I think what happens um, with many artists is um, people get caught up with having to produce and having to um, compete. And I think that when you are of the mindset of competing and also out of desperation because, you know, things like bills having to be paid, you're not necessarily going to allow yourself the freedom to dream because sometimes it takes time. You have to figure out how to make it 
how to yeah. manifest it into the purpose. physical, right? You know, you can get an idea and it's great. Like I have <laughs> lots of scraps of paper of these ideas that have floated into my mind, but I have, I put them down because I haven't figured out how to, to yes. uh, make them in, in the physical. Yeah. So, um, you know, and if you're under the gun a lot, and, and and you know you're worrying about paying your bills and and all of this stuff, it it, it puts a lot of pressure on the dreaming aspect, um, because you know that there's a time gap between the dream and the and the actuality of the creation. Um, so I'm my hope is that more artists find ways where they can actually be creative by your definition, because to me that's where the magic happens where you are getting these ideas that are are kind of personal to you in in the way that you're going to um manifest it you know like the i like you know two people can have the same idea but they each will manifest it differently according to how their physicality uh brings it into into the physical um so it's it's that thing of the dreaming being the child you know having this imagination just be free without your mind saying oh that's not possible oh that can't work oh that's going to be too crazy or people are not going to like it people are not going to buy it you know i think when those kinds of things go into an artist's mind it 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 stagnates you I, I think a word comes up uh, safe, feeling safe. Oh, yes. And, and because the society I grow in, uh, uh, creativity is killed mm -hmm. by the school, by my parents, by. So, ghosts does not exist. Uh, uh, trolls do not exist. Uh, a tree is not alive. It's, uh, you cannot talk to plants. Uh, so, uh, you have to go uh, make babies or a relationship. You have to marry or or the right. you have to think in it, like the whole whole science. The most of the science uh, still we don't know how it works. Mm -hmm. We don't know uh, how electric works or all the all the things because. Uh, but we still uh, we learn so, so uh, all the things on school how it works. But but mm -hmm. it's a stupid thing and. All that kind is uh, is done because of it feels safe, safe, because, and there uh, maybe maybe everybody is creative for uh, yes. when they is child. Yes. And and it it's uh, it's not allowed in our society to be creative because if I work in a in a uh, people care, I have to follow the rules in that way. If I think another way about illness, I cannot bring it to to in a in a in a, in a hospital because it doesn't fit in that that that, that system and because uh, for me everything is a reflection a mirror of yes. what i so if i if i get an accident with a car it means that i have to slow down mm. and it's not because another car crashes on my car it's because i was not aware of my uh, state of of being in the now and it's a, a very small uh, things, but it's a very big thing because everything is, is, is I have to uh, mirror to myself yeah. because I, the, the world is a part of me and I'm a part of the, the world and God is in me and God is everywhere and yeah. everything is alive and, and I'm not uh, alone at the, on this world. I, I live in the stars. I live in the universe in the same time. That gave me chills. That that's so beautiful. And I think, you know, you hit on some serious things in terms of being present and taking responsibility. Um, that a lot of that we humans don't necessarily want to do. And we tend to blame other people for stuff when, as you said, you know, the car accident, you had to slow down, you have to be aware. And I think that when we allow ourselves to, uh, and also to backtrack in terms of what you were saying in terms of society, 
not, a, you know, we're being, you know, things are being drummed into us. This is the way you're supposed to do this. This is the way you're supposed to do that. And it kills the dreaming. I mean, if you, um, you know, many of, of our listeners have children and if you just observe the freeness of, of a, a three-year-old versus a seven-year-old, there, there's, there's a, di like by the time they, they're hitting seven and they're going to school and all of that, th some of the imagination and the freedom begins to get lost because there's rules that they have to adhere to. And the, the thing is, if you can nurture your children so that they never lose connection with their imagination because that's where the creativity is. That's where the freedom is. is in, and that's what's so resonant in your work. That's what made me stop. You know, lots of stuff come down in a Facebook uh, news feed, but that's, that video stopped me because of all of the elements that you've spoken about. That was all in that video to me. So you are, hanging out with the squirrels, which is so cool <laughs> that for eight years, these guys have been hanging out with you and, and, ha and letting you play and, and, um, exercise your imagination in, 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 in these, uh, these photos, my goodness. But I want to go back to how you even got to Sweden. What was Sweden? You said how, how you even got to Sweden? How? Oh, Sweden. You... oh, oh, that's uh, I. I try to 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 uh, to to, uh, to talk it short because it's a long story. But, but okay. But it's an I, amazing story. I don't. You know, please. You know, tell it the okay. way that you want to tell it. My focus uh, uh, in that time I lived in Amsterdam. Um, nice city, nice country, but I decided in my uh, vision that I, before I was, uh, went 40 years, I wanted to isolate myself in nature. Uh, and um, that was my goal and that was the thing I, I wanted to do. Um, um, I, maybe I was 38 or something, I, I had a relation. I had, everything was fine. I had a, a nice house, nice job. Uh, I did a lot of things. I had friends, I had a girlfriend and whatever, but I, I knew that's what I want. And um, I suddenly I, I thought it was time. So I quit everything. I quit my job. I quit my, uh, I, I, I quit my uh, apartment. I, I just, most of my stuff I throw on the street. And <laughs> I so suddenly I was illegal in Amsterdam because I had nothing anymore because I had no job I had no, nothing I, I had no security no no because suddenly I was uh, not in the system anymore and I bought a small boat because I thought I'm going to uh, sail to the uh, country I I, I uh, want uh, I did not know that it was Sweden but that was what I decided. And I uh, said farewell to all my friends. I said, I never will see you again. And um, so I lived in a small boat and it was winter. It was a stupid time. It was, <laughs> it was so cold. Um, I had no heating because it was a very small boat. And um, I, I just did not think. I just thought this I have to do. And so police came and I was indeed I was illegal in Holland suddenly it was strange because um, when you don't have a house suddenly uh, you don't belong to a system anymore so no security no no rights and it was really strange where where I suddenly was in and I did not care because I, I really did not care I had my plan to go away so but uh, it took a half year, so the it was March. So I lived a half year in a boat on on the on the, 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 the water in near to Amsterdam. And I read a lot of uh, things about sailing. I have been sailing instructor, instructor when I was young, but uh, uh, sailing on the sea is different. I, I did not know about that, and so I read a lot of books in in a library and. 
So um, just before it was March or something, and I uh, thought now it's time to go to the sea. And um, I, I said farewell to my family. I said, I love you and I will never see you again. And uh, I left everything uh, behind. I had really uh, nothing anymore. And it, it sounds very uh, simple, but it was not simple. I was crying, I, I was shaking. I, I, thought, I, I thought it was my time to die. So it felt also, it was a risk I took. And, uh, but it was worth it because I, I, this was my vision, what I wanted to do. And um, in March, suddenly uh, I thought, now I, I'm going to sail. And uh, so I sailed uh, towards the sea and a, a lot of stupid things happened. But of, in the end, I, I made the sea, and uh, it was a beautiful day. And um, it was a little cold. Maybe it was April that time. And uh, there was, I don't know what kind of fish that was, a kind of dolphins, uh, wow. dolphin kind. I, it, it cannot be dolphins, but they were that big and with that, that size uh, of fish. And they were swimming uh, beside my boat. So it, that was special. Yes. The, the wind came from the south. So I thought maybe uh, Sweden is a good idea to, to uh, sail to Sweden because I had so many maps. Uh, so I, I could go to France or to Canada or whatever, mm. but the wind was going from the south. So I thought, thought oh, it's, it's Sweden, maybe Norway or something. And so I, uh, I went to the sea and uh, suddenly everything was fog everywhere else. I could not see and I, I panicked and I thought, I what to do because it, there's so many big boats uh, 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 there and I had a small boat and, 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 uh, and I heard the, the, the noise of the, the mist horns yeah. and they, they are so quick and I could not see them. I could only, only listen to the horns and, I, and there was completely no, no, no sights. No, I could not see backwards or forwards. I, I thought uh, so I took big risk. I thought I, I just uh, because suddenly all the wind was gone. It was a stupid situation, and wow. but I went went uh, moved on, and uh, so uh, I escaped that uh, uh, the route. It's like the big ships has uh, roads you can say on the, on the sea, and there they they all so. If you cross that, then then you are safe because then you uh, it's a big chance that you don't uh, get any visitors of big boats anymore so maybe it's a 100 meter a line a road in the sea where where the big ships are, are going, maybe 150 okay. maybe 200 i don't know wow. so i made it and the, the fog was gone and i went on and uh, it, it started to become stormy because in the in, in march <laughs> april it's 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 um, so four days i was fighting with the wind and then uh, the the big waves and i had such a small boat and the waves were so, so enormous. And I loved it somehow, but I was so tired because I could not sleep. I, I just worked, worked my way to the waves. And uh, so I, it's, it, I had so many visions about stupid things. Uh, the, the more tired I, I was, the more things I saw. Uh, uh, wow. And, but, after the, I was so tired and I could not sleep. And in the end, I had to sleep. And um, so I rest myself on, on I, I just let it go. I, I just put my sail down and I thought I, I, I need to rest. And suddenly I heard a lot of loud noise and uh, I, I run outside, it was night. And every, everywhere on one side there was light. And um, there was a big boat was crashing my boat. And, um uh, yeah he he did not see me uh, so he just went on because he even did, did not realize what he had done but my mask was gone and uh, so uh, oh uh, and and it was raining and uh, the high waves and so i thought uh, this is it so it's my <laughs> and uh, the, the, the boat was did not realize this i was alone there in the big waves and uh, but somehow I, I, I had a big uh, tool that I can cut the wires of my mast was laying in, mm. in the, 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 the waves to, to balance the boat a little bit uh, again. And uh, oh, so no. I, uh, I lost my old mast and uh, with the cables, it, it just uh, went in the sea. And uh, 
I laid myself down on bed. I thought, it, now it's time to die for me. So this was my short travel. And but uh, the next morning, I still was in the boat, and uh, so I managed it. So I thought uh, I tried to to make a. a, a I had many uh, different kind of sails. So so a front sail is smaller. I thought maybe I can put it up and make some wind, and and maybe they blow me to Denmark or something, and. Uh, so when I was building my my kind of thing to to get some wind in, uh, and uh, then a uh, um, um, physics ship saved me and they 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 saw me and uh, uh, they put me a line and they brought me to to Denmark. Wow. And in uh, Denmark, uh, the the safe safeguard uh, took the over from the the physics ship. And I was there in a, it was called uh, Hansholm, a, a small physics town in Denmark. And they took me there and I could stay one month uh, with people to repair my ship. And um, I had nightmares. Uh, in two weeks, I had nightmares. I, I woke up that the <laughs> ship was so... coming and, and, and I walked out of my bed in, in a sleepwalk and I stood there, a big ship. Is going. Two weeks, <laughs> I had nightmares. I thought, no. No way, I never go sail again. <laughs> I, oh. But after a month, uh, I repaired my boat. I, I, I thought, okay, I go. I, I, I followed uh, again and uh, I had bought a new mast and improvised it with new wires. And uh, um, this time I thought I'd go uh, into uh, Limfjord, it's called. It's, it's, it's a canal you almost can say uh, through Denmark from, from, mm. east, from west to east. Okay, so I, I started to sail there and I think the first or the second day already my uh, second mast was breaking <gasps> and uh, because it was not a good mast, the, 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 the wires were not good, it was a stupid thing, but did I, <laughs> I did not know and uh, it was a, a second hand mast and we just cut it and we placed it on the boat, it was a stupid thing. <laughs> but, so. That was the second time that I crashed, and this time on an island in Denmark. It was uh, called Liveu, and uh, it was so. Um, this time I I had such a fire thing uh, to to uh, so you know if, if the boat is sinking you you put some uh, fireworks in the air to oh, save. Oh okay uh, yes. But uh, then I remember the, the safety uh, people who saved me, they say, then you have to pay a lot of money because then you, you, you're bringing the big help. It's oh, so wow. if, if I uh, say a mayday, mayday also, then mm -hmm. I'm responsible because then I bring help. So I, and that was a stupid thing because I crashed on an island. There were, there were big rocks. Uh, uh, so I did not need to do it. But that was the first thing I was thinking. I said, I yeah. need to rescue it. I yes. Need to but uh, so I, I put out of my clothes and, and uh, jumped out of the, the boat because uh, it was on rocks. So there was maybe 10 meters to the land or something. And uh, mm -hmm. so I stood there naked and I thought I, I could not. You said you it. stood naked? Yeah, I took out of the clothes because I had to go in the water and, uh, you know, that kind of Okay. <laughs> and I tried to rescue my, my boat. And so people came and then I went to back to the boat because nothing was to be rescued because the boat was laying on the rocks oh. and uh, so they took me in uh, it was a small island and I uh, started to work and I wow. they could not uh, get my boat from that place because uh, there was so much wind and it was risky so it took mm -hmm. maybe one week before they could uh, uh, rescue my boat mm -hmm. and um, so I thought the boat is gone and uh, wow. I could uh, I could, they uh, offered me work on that island because it was a kind of tourist thing. So I had, uh, uh, had to do cleaning and uh, drive a tractor and that kind of, and I earned money. And uh, so they, uh, in one week, they saved my ship, you can say, and I, I started to fix it again. And I had no mast, so I, I had to buy a new mast. So it took me <laughs> half a year. I stayed a half a year on that island. So oh, it wow. was already uh, October in uh, uh, in uh, when I left that island. But and the this island thing was, was in Denmark, right? This, uh, this yeah, island. it was called Liveu, that island. Liveu, okay. And the crazy, uh, uh, new, big newspapers, of course, big uh, news, uh, Holland crest, and uh, you know, in Denmark. So it was uh, good. 
big, big excited news. And, and nobody <laughs> in Holland uh, knew that I was uh, had left Holland. I just sailed away. So nobody even oh. know that, that, that I was gone. So that was the strange thing. I was dead <laughs> somehow. Yeah, wow. Um, the strange thing is also the, I think maybe uh, two days before I left and I, I fixed the whole boat in that half year, um, we went, uh, I organized a party, a, a farewell party because it was a nice, a nice people. I had a good, good life there. I, I loved it, but I had to go. And uh, so we went to the mainland and uh, to buy shopping. And somehow I don't know, but I missed the last boat. I could not uh, come to the island because I was together with uh, someone and th that person had took all the, the shopping with it. And, and that, that person gets the boat, but I was talking with somebody in another boat and I totally, oh that's, so, that's so much me. I, when I'm into it something, then I'm really into it mm. in something. And I'm mm. totally, I'm not, not I, I'm not interested in something else. I, I just have something <laughs> focused in my mind. So I could not come to the island to my own party. And so, but, oh my uh, God. <laughs> so I asked everybody and, and there was a an, uh, an, uh, sailing uh, match. So small sailing boats uh, would match each other. And I asked some people, can you go to the island during the match when, uh, you know, they, they try to win and they have a course to, to, to do uh, you understand? Match? Yes, I do. There was a there was a, a, a contest or a race. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Exactly. Race yes. Contest. And uh, they they came may, uh, very close uh, to the island. Uh, the river. maybe hundred meters, maybe fifty meters. I don't remember. But uh, so I put all my uh, I could uh, I went <laughs> with the race. I put all my clothes uh, in my in a bag so that it was <laughs> again I was naked. It was <laughs> it was strange, but I thought this is. Damn, the first day I was naked on the island and the, and the last day I was like, <laughs> Talk about full circle. It was so, and, and the party already started without me, of course. And I came there and, and I thought, what, so, this, this, so wait a minute, get, get, wait a minute. So, so you get in, in a, one of the boats that was racing, hmm. right? Racing by your island now. Had they finished the race and they just drove you or? No, no, during the race. That's why they. The race. So you had to get out and swim? Yeah, yeah, because oh. they they want to win. They they don't have time to to put me on the island. So I you had have... to leap off the boat. Yeah, yeah, except during the race. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I'm so glad I'm talking to you for the second time because this detail was not in the other story you told oh, me. This I, is I don't amazing. Know. Yeah, but okay. Oh. But, Two days uh, after the party, I maybe the next day, I don't know, uh, I went away and uh, uh, I met a guy in uh, Denmark who lived in Sweden. And he said, uh, oh, mm. visit me when you come to Sweden. So I went uh, with the sailing boat, uh, w w with, which I repaired to, to Sweden. Yes. And, uh, to a uh, um, small, uh, quite a big fish town. It was uh, called Hugenes. And from there, I uh, went to the to the man what, what I uh, met in, in uh, Denmark. Oh, and, wow. and I, I uh, looked up uh, at, the, at the internet to, uh, to houses to buy in, in Sweden. And I saw a small house in, uh, in the middle of Sweden. And uh, I, I said, that one I'm going to buy. And I, so I could borrow a motorcycle of him. I, I don't uh, have a license for a motorcycle. I never had a, <laughs> driven a motor. And it was about- I mean, you just, you just were in, in a boat in the sea. Why would you need a, a license for a motorcycle? Oh, that's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is the man who took a, a small boat from Amsterdam in the sea to Denmark, crashing twice. Why would you need a license for a motorcycle? That's like no big deal. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> nah. so I had an appointment to to buy my house, and so I went with a motorcycle there, and uh, it was thousand kilometers, and it, it's quite because it's in the middle of Sweden. It's North Sweden they call it, but it's it's mm. it's big. Uh, 
from uh, south to north it's 2000 kilometers almost Sweden it's, it's it's really big so but this was about uh, one and a half days drive I think I was oh and my. It's 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 long drive because have the you ever been on a motorcycle before? <laughs> no, I never. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew the answer. <laughs> I was. It, it's uh, it was not a very fast, maybe ninety five kilometers an hour. You know, it's not the fastest mm -hmm. motorcycle. So and uh, but uh, it went well. Everything was okay. So I I had already the money in my pocket because I know I did. I, this is my house. I said. <laughs> So I I bought the house and uh, I had to, to go uh, back to uh, fix uh, to buy a car and to sell my boat and um, so everything I had fits fits in a uh, was fitting in a in a car so I wow. um, I and even uh, I I got a, a fireplace from the friend uh, who uh, lived in Hugenes or near to Hugenes. And even that fits in the car, so I had almost <laughs> nothing. So when I when I and I said to the people who I bought the house from, I said I want don't want to have anything. So uh, take everything out of the house. So beds, everything what was in the house, there was nothing. So um, the the first weeks I had to live on the floor and the, the kind of things I did I really did it not I only had the things what I had on my boat and uh, that yeah. was it and uh, so that's my Sweden story that is a wow you know I, I I'm speechless you know and the thing is I knew the story but hearing it again and hearing some other things that you recalled and, and actually the, cause you, you were, it was such a big part that there are, you're not going to tell me, be able to tell me everything in, in a half hour, but the hearing it again is like hearing it for the first time. It is just extraordinary. And I think, um, you know, one of the, the things in this, uh, about this podcast is my urging people to follow their dreams and to follow their heart and you did it to like the max man <laughs> you, you followed that voice boy that but what an extraordinary story and i mean um i i think what's for me so exciting is i found out this part of your journey because of following my instincts from seeing that video in my news feed so i say to our listeners Wherever you are at this point in time, we're still going through COVID and we may be in this situation for way longer than you may want it to be. But whatever your inner being is saying to you, follow it, follow it, even if it seems crazy, because I mean, get that that's extraordinary that you left everything, you let go of everything to follow this, this impulse, this not impulse, but this urge, this urging within you to have the life that you have right now it's it's extraordinary yeah but um it, it has a big price and i can imagine that people don't want to pay the price and um i i remember that my change in life was when i was 12 12 or 13 or something i i feared everything um i Every week I had to go to the doctor because I was allergic for everything. Every week, uh, every day I had medicines. Mm. My father beat at me. I was afraid of a dog or whatever. I, I was. It, I, I wanted to die because I did not find a reason in, in living. And mm. um, so I had a dream and I asked in a dream why I'm living. And if you don't answer, then I want to die because then it's nothing for me. It's uh, for here. And I got a dream uh, answer. And uh, I, it was a mirror, and in the mirror I cut uh, three signs. It was runes, you know, the yes. runes. Yes, the Celtic runes. And I did not know anything about runes, of course, because twelve thirty. I, I but when I saw the symbols, the three symbols, I knew exactly why I was living and why I was on Earth. And when I uh, the next morning, um, one thing I said to my father: "You never ever beat me again." Um, the other thing I said, I never ever take medicine uh, again. I don't go to the doctors. That, that's that's finished. And all the things 
I did. It will, would, uh, it did not happen anymore. And uh, because I, the dream was so powerful because it, for me, it's, um, it was kind of um, living the sun on, on earth. It's living the light, uh, being in light somehow. And it's very complicated to explain uh, the, the runes because I followed, uh, maybe 10 years later, I followed workshops about runes and the explanations and why, but it didn't matter because as, as a child, I, I understood exactly what yes. it was. And uh, so it's, it's the place where I live and the place where I am is a paradise. It's always a paradise. It's always light. And that, wow. um, um, and it was the mirror. That's the strange thing because for me, I, I made a company later on. Uh, it was called Sonos. And Sonos? because, yeah, it was two, three runes. It was kind of the Blix, the S, and it was the crossing of the-, the Oh, the, S, that's wholeness, right? Is that one wholeness? Yeah, that's the sun symbol like that. Yes, and then it was a light, uh, a cross, double cross. So it was like the medicine wheel with the eight directions. That was the middle sign. And then the N, the, the big box, that was the, uh, the third uh, letter. Okay. So, but if you just look like it, it's look like it's written sun, S-O-N. Wow. So what I did, I made, created later on a company what called, uh, was called Sonos. It's mm -hmm. the mirror side. So you have exactly the mirror of son, Sonos. And uh, many later on, I saw companies uh, naming their company the same as, as what, what the, uh, uh, but, um, because of that, I think this journey to Sweden uh, was much more easier uh, somehow. Because I, I, if there's no meaning in life, then it's hard to find dreams in life. And yes. because it's it's, and uh, then um, then it's hard to find also the 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 gaining of it. And uh, because spiritual gaining is not enough. And uh, I cannot uh, live in a in a cave because that's not the way to to trans transformation. In right. man. it's in the society itself, in the in yes. the nature itself, in the doing, and the doing is the reflection of what. I'm, that's why I like it so much. This the sun in the reflection in the mirror, sonos, yes. the, the light, and the light is reflecting to myself, and it, it's so it's it's a. It's not the way anymore. Maybe I did it in past lives, but I did not. Uh, I, I still I, I have a long, long process to go, and uh, mm. I see I, I see so clearly uh, clearly where I have to go, which was the road. But it's so hard. It's yeah. very hard. Wow! So thank you for sharing that with us. Um, I I know that. Um, I think that this period that we're in now with the pandemic has, you know, you speak of mirrors. I think that um, this 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 time period that we're in has magnified everything. It's magnified what's not working. It's magnified what is working, and it's magnified people's fears and the people that play on people's fears. And I think that one of the things during this time is to really learn and to break free of some of that stuff and to l listen more, get clear more, sit to still connect. more, connect more. The irony is that we can't connect in a way, but we're forced to, if we're paying attention, realizing that you have to connect inwardly and when you do that you were connecting outwardly and um I, I there's so many lessons to be learned during this pandemic and it's it has nothing to do with being fearful it has all to do with um connecting to the power that's within you and so i you know your 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 journey has been up to this point extraordinarily powerful and I, my hope is that 
to our listeners, it, it resonates with all of you in terms of living your best life and deciding what that is. And it has nothing to do with what other people say it has to do with. It has all to do with what's going on within you. And you won't know what's going on within you until you stop and listen. And so um, I, I cannot thank you enough for speaking to me again. It's like, again, even though we're doing this again, it's doing it anew. I, I so thank you for sharing a very, very personal uh, journey with us. And um, again, I urge you, the listener, to please, please, please go and see Gets Work. Can you just tell us where people can find you? And again, I'll have all of that in, in the in the show description. Uh, Instagram uh, on my name. Just Google my name, and you see uh, everywhere squirrels. You see my website, the <laughs> uh, Facebook. Uh, it's uh, it's so easy to find. I, it's really so easy. And we're have... grateful for that. <laughs> wow! Thank you so very very much. Thank and you what's, too. you know what, before I, I said thank you already, but I want to ask you what, uh, what is next that you want to share in terms of your creativity? What are you looking to create next? Or what do you hope to see? Or, or what, what do you, what's happening within the vision that you want to share? It's, um, uh, yeah, 80 years squirrels is, is a lot. And uh, I think I'm sometimes in a circle, not not with the feeling of squirrels, because it hurts me very much when uh, squirrels is dying. But the connection, it's beautiful. Uh, every new generation is different. But I, it's yeah. so clear that that all animals um, can be uh, connected very easy, and it's not very it's not hard. And mm. Uh, so I thought there's a uh, beer photographer uh, uh, living not so far from me. And I thought, why not do this with beers? That, uh, uh, like uh, sweeping the floors or that kind of thing. So it's so easy to do it with bears also, with all the kind of animals, I think, because mm -hmm. it's, it's basically the same. And I think uh, it's... it's um, somehow animals love to also have that kind of intention and I think mm. um, I, the work I do, I think uh, more and more people love the squirrel, like people love horses, uh, yes. dogs and cats, but they start to love so much the squirrel because the squirrel, it, it, they get a smile. And um, if, if I would do the same uh, work with, with crocodiles, I think more and more people would love crocodiles also because uh -huh then uh, people don't see it as dangerous or then people see it more as fun and magic creative because all, all the animals are uh, magic but not all the people uh, see, see uh, the beauty of a spider when they see a spider but if you get a little bit uh, a broom in the hands of a spider then if you do that more often and more often then all people say wow true, I, true. That's when i see a spider <laughs> <laughs> oh boy that's a big one <laughs> Thank you so very much. Thank you. And and may your wildest dreams come true. <laughs> and uh, it's very beautiful what you are doing, Shaki, and uh, your spontaneity and your laughter. It's beautiful. Thank you also. Oh, thank you so very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>